Hi, uh, let's do a beginner's guide to painting skies using the large Ron Ranson Hake. Lovely brush, takes a while to get used to, but far from impossible. So what I've got here is a piece of Fabriano 130 pound paper very good for wet and wet. Ron Ranson, who devised all the big brush techniques, was a wet and wet painter. So, put a bit of water on the, on the paper. Not so that it's flooding down the paper, but just enough to, to wet it, which was all wet. I always start with wet and wet. You can dry it as you go so that you can do other techniques with, with the dry paper, but I'll probably do a winter scene here. Uh, here's the palette, the uh, cadmium yellow, you can use uh, any yellow really. I'm using this because I prefer it to, I prefer it to the lemon yellow, but I like cadmium yellow. This is, uh, I couldn't get any more of it when I, went online to buy or replace my stock. So I, I have got some cadmium yellow light, which I'm looking forward to using when that's all gone. So we've got cadmium yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, uh, black, which I would probably not suggest you start with. But use Payne's grey. Uh, Payne's grey, I, I make Payne's grey by mixing it with blue and a bit of alizarin. It's, uh, but black is, is a great mixer with burnt sienna and blue. So I'm just trying to clean my palette, it's still a bit, bit wet. Uh, so raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints black, forget the green, I'm not gonna use that. Uh, and the burnt sienna. Burnt sienna I do use and I prefer the Cotman. These are all Cotman colors. The burnt sienna is a very, very good colour. It's quite saturated for a student quality. These paints are more than adequate. That palette will, will do most of your work. Don't start throwing other colours at a painting in the hope that it will, it will get you out of some difficulty. It won't. It'll just make more problems. Learn your colours. I learn the mixes they make and then you'll 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 stay with them and then if you try another color you you, you wish you hadn't uh, you don't have to use burnt sienna you can mix it really with the burnt umber and the light red but but I like it it's a ready mixed color so I can mix it with my ultramarine which I love it makes a very lovely dark almost black so uh, let's warm the sky up with some colour. So we'll use a bit of a bit of raw sienna. Let's put it on. Just get it all over there. This all dries much lighter than when you put it in. Put it on first. At first, it, you'll be surprised. Now, a good a good. Uh, colour to put in at the stage would be some ultramarine. You don't have to, but it just gives that bit of bit of bit of blue in the sky. And then we can make a bit of cloud. Well we can even add a bit bit, bit of a burnt sienna. Down down below. Why not? Just, just enjoy the, the actual process of painting. Okay, so now cloud. So we've got black, blue, so that gives, and the, and the alizarin, so that gives us a sort of Payne's grey. Oh. I'll keep this in the brushes. The thing with, with the hakes is they do eventually lose their hairs. A bit like us blokes, and as we get older. Can't be doing with hair transplant. So we just get all this colour in, 
and then while the paint is just sort of wet or the paper is just wet you can do what you like with it but once it starts to dry then you leave it alone <coughs> I've got a cup of tea as well but I've gotten cold but so have I most other people at this time of year. I hope all you Americans are safe and uh, and keeping warm. If you're getting it a lot worse than we are over in the UK. Uh, right, I'm going to put in some distance now. I'm going to put in a bit of, a bit of blue and a, and a bit more of that black. And use the corner of the brush and we'll just flood in some some trees let them diffuse the paper is about 25 degrees an ideal slope will be about 30 degrees we can have some let's put some burnt sienna in there and we'll put some some pines Oh, pine trees. This will all vanish. And then we can go over it as it dries. Oh. Remember that the trees are, pine trees are, it's all green. Bluey green. And when you paint over wet surfaces, you need thicker paint, otherwise it will all just vanish into, into nothingness. No, just using the corner of the brush, let's come across here with a bit more stuff. Different trees. Look, when your brush splits, just bring it together again with some water. And then we'll just do some, some of these. See, that, this brush does split, I must say. It's a, not a very well behaved brush. So we'll have some of these coming down here. Look, oh, simple as that. Got your pines. Some go up, some go down. So I'll give you the impression of uh, distance here. Put a bit of warm in there. I don't know why. Okay, so there we've got a landscape under the sky. Let's look, drop in some some neat blue in there just to give send that back a bit blue colors cool colors recede warm colors come forward okay so let's let's put in some landscape now the paper's drying slowly so let's get in some warmer colors Bit of umber, let's have a bit of umber in there, and a bit of blue. Mm. 
just putting in some some stuff sticking up above snow So I don't want too much of this, but I'll tell you what I do like, is, let's just fill some of that up there, is um, some, like, water pond or something, which would show a bit, bit of black, reflecting dark, brooding sky. I will do some of that, I think. <coughs> okay, right, now, that's still a little bit damp down there, so I'm going to dry that with a hair dry. so take your headphones off or fast forward, go. Oh, turn on. Okay, I'll just re-clip. So I find the, the Hague far, far um, more interesting to use than any round brush I've ever had. And I've got loads of them. Got loads, look. look, look hakes, oh, not hakes, all my squirrels, my sables, but it's this brush that does it for me. You don't have to use it, but it is a truly wonderful brush. You can get loads of these for the price of one number 12 sable. Alright, so let's, let's mix in a bit of, bit of blue. and a, a, You need a cloth by the side of you to take off excess moisture. So we'll use burnt sienna and ultramarine. Look, that gives a lovely, lovely, lovely Dark. You can make it warm dark by adding more. Yes. Pop on. I did one earlier like this. Just a bit more blue in there. Right? A bit of frost on. Okay, let's just go a bit further over there. Now that's an interesting bit. Let's pop it in there. Okay, so that's our little pond. Okay, now we're putting some blue grasses sticking up above. Got to put some shadows in here and there. So now you can see why I painted the foreground when I did the sky. The, the, the snow will reflect the colours that it sees and we just enhance it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to put in a little bit of harder stuff on in those trees there. So just the blue. Just, just a couple, well, a few dozen. They're a bit darker, a bit th thicker paint. A 
Some detail in there. It's only an impression of detail. It's, uh, you can see how easy it is really. It's when you start naming things and, and painting portraits of things that it all starts to go away from you. Do an impression. There are plenty of people who are copy. I do it far better than I can. But that's not what Big Brush Watercolour Painting is all about. It's all about freshness and spontaneity. Making things up as you go along. Enjoying the process of painting. As long as you get the basics right, like the colour recession, aerial procession, perspective. Okay. That's about it really. It's a now we'll do some shadows, just just plain blue. Just putting the shadow where those clumps are. Nice flat landscape, or we can just put a little bit of undulation in. Okay, so there we are. That'll do. That's a quick, a quick beginner's guide to painting skies. <coughs> so let's see what we've got. I washed it in with the raw sienna to start with and then I added some warmer burnt sienna uh, and then I mixed a, a sky colour, a cloud colour from black, a, a alizarin and a bit of ultramarine but you, if you're going to use uh, Payne's Grey you can mix that with the, ultramarine, with the alizarin straight away. And that gives you a realistic uh, cloud colour and I just added a few here and there while the paper was wet. It's critical and while it was wet I, I, did, I put the background in so I got all this nice diffuse blue blueness and as it as it dried it was able to take a harder edge but the, the, what passes for detail. I put in this pond here maybe, maybe it should be more blue but anyway let's put it in a, in a mount and we'll have a have a look. It's very similar, but I'm going, to, I'm going to try and stay with a series of beginners' house paintings because it's all right for me to to plough ahead. I'm thinking you know it all, but when you don't, this, this, this is quite a okay. Well, let's, let's put that on there. So there we are. I've got a nice, nice little painting. Then let's uh, put a signature on it. I think it's worth it. There we are. Then you can have a couple of birds if you want. Yeah, do that with a pen. Why not? Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you want a close up, let's uh, zoom in. Okay. I'm not going to go all around it because I'll have to move the uh, camera on it. it would uh, shake too much. So have a go at these things. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.